Good afternoon everyone and welcome to our last open day and we are covering cake decorating today. We are covering both levels one and level two and you are joining Joe, myself and Pip. And Pip, if you didn't already know, is our founding and managing director. She's our, our head honcho and I myself, Joe, am social media support. So today we're looking at cake decorating level one and two what is covered in the course, equipment needs, pricing and how to enrol and taking any questions that you might have. So please do feel free if you have any questions at any time, just to pop them in the comments box. So who are we here at Technology Triumphs? Well, we are providing home-based learners, be they home educated or EOTAS, or simply missing the opportunity to study certain subjects at school, we are providing them the opportunity to gain recognised NCFE accredited qualifications. And we've been doing so since 2019 by providing wholly online exam free courses, which are flexible, affordable and adaptable. And these qualifications are comparable to that of a GCSE and can be used to access further education, such as college. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. And we think one thing that sets us apart is that we are at the core part of the home educating community and we are home educating community led as well. So Pip and myself, we are both home educators as well and we follow very different styles. So when we say we understand home educating and all that comes with it, we really do mean it because we live it as well. Um, so we are going to move on and talk a little bit about the ethos of our courses. So, yeah, if you're not familiar with us or maybe have been following us on Facebook for a while, but you're really not sure quite what we're about. We've summarised it in a few key words here. So we want to provide a really immersive experience for your learners, um, but that holds flexibility at its core, whether that be in the way that you pay for your course, the way you access your course, the way that your learner can adapt the course to certain, suit their certain needs, um, how you get receive your feedback. There's so many different ways that we like to offer flexibility. We're about confidence building and we're about focusing on skills and knowledge. Uh, we speak about this a little bit later, but that's the two key things that we're looking for when we are assessing work. We want to be as adaptive as possible. We see it as uh, something that we can offer the home community that perhaps other providers can't. We will adapt the courses to suit your learner wherever possible. And that leads into the fact that we want to make these courses and these qualifications as accessible as possible. Now, the idea is that you can complete the course from anywhere on, in the world. We currently have learners enrolled with us from 14 different countries, and that's because our courses are wholly online with no classes or exams to attend. You work at completely your own pace, in your own time, wherever you are. With our fillable PDF documents, there's no need to print out any of the workbooks. You're welcome to do so if you want, but they've actually been designed to be completed electronically. And as you can see from the example here, they use lots of color and images as a way of engaging your learner. So not printer friendly, they are designed to be completed electronically. You also within the PDF doc doc workbooks have the pre-filmed tutorials. So you have links that you click on that take you to the pre-filmed tutorials on our YouTube channel that you can watch whenever it suits you and rewatch if you need or rewind. And that we find removes a lot of pressure for our learners. So not only in the fact that they can learn, they can learn that lesson at their own pace, but they can actually choose to complete that lesson at whatever time of day or whatever day of the week they wish to. So all of that is uh, delivered through our learning portal to which you're given a username and password. So when you sign up to one of our courses after your first payment is taken, you get a unique username and you have access to your entire course and you just simply upload your work as you go along with any photographic evidence and then your course assessor uploads your feedback back to you. And that's your way of submitting work and receiving your feedback for the entirety of your course. Now I mentioned in the ethos slide that one of the things that we focus on is building skills and knowledge um, and so touching and just expanding on that there are, is no assessment on SPAG so spelling and grammar um, again another way to make these courses as accessible as possible there is no exam so learners complete workbooks and they build their photo gallery which they submit on the portal but you're not 
completing or working towards an end assessment. There is no test of any description. There are no deadlines. So again, learners can work through at and complete their own pace. So not only within, for example, a two year window, um, you can take longer if you want to, you can even speed through it if you want to. So there is no uh, timeline that you have to follow to keep up with your class or the other learners on, on your cohort. So we're in every way that we can, we offer fl flexibility in the approaches that you take as well. And that is not just in terms of assessing and, and offering those the expansion on the deadlines. It's in the way that you actually complete your work, submit your work and even receive your feedback. So if you've got a learner who um, needs to have their written, written feedback done in a particular way, then we can accommodate that. We just ask you to just reach out to us and we would um, make those allowances for your learner. So we mentioned that we do, uh, we offer level one or level two courses in qualifications. That's the same for most of our um, qualifications at the moment. Level one or two, a lot, of the, a lot of people ask what's the difference between the two. So just to briefly explain, if you're not familiar with it already, the level of a course reflects the complexity of the course. So a level one qualification is in line with a GCSE grade one to three or D to G and the Bronze Arts Award. And the level two is level two, a GCSE grade four to nine or grade C to A star or the Silver Arts Award. So that's when we're talking about how difficult it is and how, you know, what sort of level of comprehension your learner should have. That's what you're looking at in terms of comparison. Now we're really careful to say that these are not equivalent to GCSEs. They are nationally recognized and they are off qual approved. And I'll explain what that means in terms of credit value. But whether or not a college or further education establishment accepts these in place of GCSEs is very much down to that individual um, college and their admissions policy. What I can say is that for the majority of our learners, they've been able to use our level two qualifications in place of a similar GCSE, for example, a DT GCSE or a cookery or food tech GCSE. So, we have a track record now because we've been established for a few years. We have been able to survey past learners. Last year, those that answered our survey, we had 88% of learners were able to use their level two qualification in place of a GCSE, with the other 12% not yet being of an age to apply for college. But if in any doubt, all we suggest you do is phone a potential college that you might have in mind for long-term plans and just ask them, would you accept this particular qualification in place of a GCSE for this particular course? Now, the other bit that sort of makes this worth or level to a GCSE and what swings it a lot with the colleges is the credit value that those courses attract. And this is what sets it apart from the arts awards, for example. So whilst the level one qualification is level to a bronze arts award, it has a larger amount of credits allocated to it. So the credits equate how many hours that you would spend working your way through the course. So the level one has nine credits attached to it, which roughly speaking is 90 hours of content. Whereas a bronze arts award, last I checked was worth six credits. And the level two qualification has 15 credits. Um, Silver arts award, I believe is nine credits. Um, and also when you compare that to a standard pass at GCSE, generally speaking, they're considered to be worth 12 to 14 credits. So the weighting of these qualifications is what really helps to make them uh, be comparable to a GCC when you're looking at things like college applications. I'm just going to check the comments to make sure we haven't got any questions come in. Should have said that actually at the start. If you have got any questions whilst we're talking, please feel free to pop in the box. Uh, we'll pick them up as we go. And then we'll also have time at the end to answer questions too. So we're going to look now in a bit more detail at each course. Um, I think I've missed off a slide here. So <laughs> the level one qualification, as I just explained, is worth nine credits. Um, it's covered over 11 workbooks. I'm going to let Joe speak a little bit more about that. But if you've got any questions about the course weighting and the differences between the two, please feel free to ask. Yeah, so probably if you've got your learner sitting with you, what they really want to know about is what exactly they're going to be covering in the course. And you are obviously going to be interested as well as parents and facilitators. So workbook one for level one cake decorating is all about different icing techniques. We look at dusting, rice paperwork, water icing, and you can work with large cake or cupcakes in this workbook. Moving on to workbook two, we then look at piping techniques. So we're going to be working with buttercream. We look at all of the tools and equipment associated with that. 
And then for one of their practicals, they are designing and decorating a cake for a, we say for a child's birthday, but actually they can, they could design it for a different celebration. It doesn't have to be a birthday, any kind of celebration, say they've, um, you know, won an award or something like that. They can definitely use that as well. And for workbook three, we look at fondant, how to cover large scale cakes and looking at contemporary cakes as well. And for practicals, some of the tasks include creating fondant flowers and characters and covering large cakes, as well as designing and decorating a contemporary style cake. And workbooks four and five, this now moves into what we call the minor project. So here learners start a larger scale project and it covers across these two workbooks and they will be designing and decorating a selection of cupcakes for a charity bake sale. They can choose any charity they like and go through the whole designing process down to decorating and presenting as well. So they take on the whole design cycle from research, completing surveys and questionnaires, designing, looking at the tools and equipment that they're going to need, and then moving on to construction, the decoration, testing and their evaluation as well. And this will also include a small aspect of business studies where we explore costing, packaging, marketing and presentation as well. And then for workbooks six to 10, learners then move on to what we call the major project. This is similar to the minor project that's just done on a larger scale and is a more sustained project as well. So whereas the minor project took place over two workbooks, this one is done over more workbooks. And within this, again, they follow the whole design cycle to research, design, plan, and make a final item from a selection of design themes in order to create a single tiered celebration cake. And those themes they can explore include the natural world, fictional stories and sci-fi. And this utilises all their previous skills and theory work that they will have covered throughout all of their previous workbooks to create what we probably all know as the final showstopper. And workbook 11 for level one cake decorating learners complete a final evaluation of their whole creative process, taking on board feedback that they've received from others as well as their assessors and suggesting ways in which they could improve their final product. And here we just have some exemplars for some of the things that our learners have completed for level one. Um, in the top corner, you can see that was the range of those cupcakes made for a charity bake sale for the minor project and this learner did theirs all based on the RNLI. We have some wonderful fondant characters from one of the earlier books as well, some examples of dusting techniques as well and just absolutely incredible delicious looking bakes there as well. So our level two qualification now if you are familiar with the format of our other courses our level two with the cake decorating works in a slightly different format to everything else. So um, it's well worth listening to this bit if you are considering this as an option, either the level one or the level two. So the level two certificate in create, uh, Creative Craft take, Cake Decorating, as I said, is worth 15 credits in line with a GCC grade four to nine, A star to C. Um, and there is about a 50-50 split of theory work to practical work. Same as the level one, um, there is an expectation to have an understanding and knowledge. However, when we talk about written work, and again, this is sort of falls in line with us not being interested in spelling and grammar and writing ability, it really is about your ability to uh, communicate knowledge. So if you are a reluctant writer or you um, struggle with that, I myself am dyslexic, so I fully empathise, you can have an adult scribe for you on this course. So long as we are able to assess your knowledge, that's all we're interested in. And it's the same for the level one and for all of our qualifications. There are no age restrictions. So there's no minimum or maximum age, but there is a guidance comprehension age. So for level one, we'd suggest a, an understanding, a reading comprehension of age 10 and above. And for level two, we'd say age 13 and above. Now that's not to say that you can't do the level one and then you move on to the level two because you've grown and matured a little bit in the time that it's taken you to get to the end of level one. So it's something to bear in mind if you did want to get the level two. 
Now, the reason I say it's slightly different from our other qualifications is because it is a bolt on to our level one. So it's not a separate course for the level two qualification. And Joe will explain this a little bit, perhaps in the next slide, is that you actually complete the level one content and then you complete an additional section that upgrades you to a level two. So the level two course still covers everything you do in level one. So you don't have to have any prior knowledge in cake decorating to be able to book onto the level two and do fine with it because it starts from the basics uh, stages in the level one. Now, the reason I wanted to highlight this is because what that means is that you cannot complete a level one qualification, claim that certificate, and then complete the level two qualification because you would have already had that work assessed against a different qualification. So if you want to do the level two potentially, what we always say is you book onto the level one. At the point where you're sort of midway through the course, we will actually contact you um, at the point that we're going to register you with the awarding body and say, look, are you thinking that you might want to go on to do the level two? If that's the case, that's fine. We won't register you at this point and your work will be assessed against the level two. And the bonus of that is, is that if you do go on to level two, you don't pay the full cost of the level two course. course. You only pay a bolt on price, uh, which we'll cover again at the end of this. Yeah, so as Pip said, the level two forms a bolt on and this bolt on is six additional workbooks. We basically complete another major project, which also has a business enterprise unit attached to it as well. And we are actually really proud with this level two course because we have been able to work together with an industry leading specialist, which is the cake illusionist. If you haven't seen any of her work before, her name is Hannah, and we would really encourage you to give it a Google search and have a look at some of the amazing things that she creates because she is an absolute master, an absolute artist when it comes to cake decorating. And so within the level two and those six additional bolt on workbooks, learners embark on learning greater practical skills in cake sculpture where they learn how to sculpt a cake and then air spray it. And in this case, it's a sea turtle. So I think we've got a little bit. Oh, we've got a message come through. Um, Natalie's just catching up with us. That's great. Lovely to have you join us, Natalie. Thank you so much for coming online with us. So, yes, if you are interested in cake decorating, you may already have known about her work as well. But we yeah, definitely encourage you to take a look at Hannah the Cake Illusionist. So within these six bolt-on workbooks, we'll be utilising tutorials from Hannah. And this again is a sustained project, similar to the major project that's done at level one, where learners go through the whole design cycle to research, design, plan, and make that final item, as well as completing a business studies unit, which covers areas such as product sales, marketing, costing, and then employment opportunities as well. And the final workbook for level two, again, takes the form of a final evaluation and business presentation, which collates all of the previous studies they have done in terms of the business enterprise into a kind of dragon's den style pitch for investment. Now we're going to cover briefly some equipment needs. Um, these are a list of things that you will need access to or are beneficial to have for each level of the course. What we do want to make clear is that when you book on for one of our courses, you have full access to all of the workbooks so you can easily look ahead at the tasks and plan in for equipment and materials and ingredients and stuff like that. So there's no big shock that suddenly you've got to um, get a cake turntable and an air spray gun in the next two weeks or anything like that. You can plan ahead, which is great for budgeting needs. On that note, the air spray gun that we have listed is only required for level two. However, there are alternatives available and it is possible to paint your cake instead of spraying it with a food safe paintbrush and dyes. So some of that equipment that you will need access to includes a laptop, tablet or PC in order to be able to access your workbooks and upload your submissions, a phone camera or digital camera so that you can capture that photographic evidence. Of course, you will be needing icing bags and nozzles as well as sculpting tools. 
and we would also recommend a cake turntable. And there's other items such as um, sketchbooks, whisks and bowls and general kitchen equipment that you will also need. But we do have a more in-depth list which is also available in our closed community group for cake decorating. And we are going to be talking about those groups in a little bit more detail later. And I'm just going to pause there for a second and just see if anyone has got any questions on anything that we have covered so far. I was just going to add as well, in terms of all the equipment, uh, if you look on Amazon, and I could provide a link for this, actually, if I dig around, I have found some really good baking starter kits for about 30, 35 pound that pretty much include everything you need aside from the air spray gun. So something like that gives you a bit of everything and it will be a good, you know, starting pack um, before people want to sort of specialise and, and upgrade to better equipment if they pursue it in the long run. But certainly like a starter baking kit with um, some uh palette knives and things like that, m nozzles, piping bags, all the rest of it. And then places like Poundland are amazing for getting some b bargains in um, baking supplies, B&M. You're going to get some really good um, creative moulds and things like that as well. So it's the sort of stuff, like Joe said, you most mostly in terms of baking, you're going to be utilising your, your household kitchen items. But other things aren't very, very expensive in terms of if you're considering this as a two year provision, those pieces of equipment you're going to be using over and over again through that time. I can't see any questions come in, so I'm going to crack on in terms of the payments So the nitty gritty stuff. So the level one courses are priced like our other level one courses at £480, level two at £600. But of course, we don't expect people to have that kind of money in the bank to be able to pay up front. And we um, offer a payment plan option for everybody. And you pay the same total amount, regardless of which pathway you choose. So on a level one award, you pay £20 a month for 24 months and a level two, £25 a month for 24 months. But most importantly, these are no obligation payment plans. You can start this course and cancel at any point without having to pay anything extra. We just need three working days notice to be able to cancel the payment plan. And we actually hold on record your payments that you've already made. So actually, if you change your mind again and want to come back to it, then you can you just pick up from where you left off. So you don't need any justification for cancelling. Any reason is a good enough reason for us. We don't want to hold people to ransom. So when you sign up, you're not actually obligating yourself to that full total price. If you try it and your learner doesn't engage with it or your circumstances change, you are free to cancel even after the first payment has come out. The other thing I wanted to say on this, obviously, I mentioned that level two is very different to the level, uh, the other level two courses we offer. And that I want to be very open in terms of the most affordable way for people to access the level two qualification is to book onto the level two rather than the level one course. So if you know your learner wants the level two qualification at some point, then you may as well jump straight to booking the level two and bypass the level one course because then you only pay the 680, uh, sorry, the 600 pounds. Whereas if you pay, uh, you book onto the level one, then decide you want to upgrade, you're going to pay, pay marginally more because of the 150 pound bolt on price that is um, attached to the, the level one to level two upgrade. So it might be that your learner's not quite ready for the content of level two right now, but if you book onto level two, they can work their way through the level one course anyway, because that's part of it. And then they may well be at the point where they're ready to embark on the level two aspect when they finish that, or you could just have a little break or pause in between and then come back to the level two at a stand another day. Um, I just think it's, it's very, um, unusual for providers to be open and honest about the most cost effective way for uh, for people and parents um, but as we're home editors ourselves we're all about whatever we can do to help save you money so if level two is something that you're you're looking for in the future then it was probably the better idea to book onto that one rather than the level one um and just to say that that price includes everything you don't pay anything additional to that so you have access to the course in full as soon as you start from the first month as soon as you've got your login, you have got access to the entire course. You don't have to wait for us to release booklets after your payments. You can whiz through it at whatever pace you want. You also get your own assigned assessor. So the one person that is assigned to mark in your work and is very much invested in what, your, what you uh, achieve and will try everything they can to encourage and motivate you through positive language and your feedback. You also get online support from a qualified teacher, which in this case is me, and the registration and the certification with NCFE, the awarding body. So no hidden costs. It's all included within it. 
and then enrollment. So if you are interested, if you would like to um, reserve a space, you can book right now. Bookings are open now for a September start and they close on um, the 31st of July. If you book now, you're not obligating yourself to anything. If you will cancel before the 1st of August, before the first payment comes out, you haven't lost a penny. Um, so if you're thinking about trying to get provisions in place, I know I am with my children, trying to get provisions in place ahead of September, then you can book this. If you change your mind or something better comes up or more suitable for your learner, then you can cancel it and we are not obligating you to even the first payment. So you can choose to pay in a one-off installment or you can opt for the payment plan option. You can even opt for the fast track option on the booking system. All that means is that you pay double payments, but in 12 months instead of 12, 24 months. And the timeline that the learning the uh, learning portal gives you um, encourages your learner to complete within one year, but we don't hold you to that. We offer a completely no quibble cancellation policy. We don't ask any questions um, and like I say, no obligation sign up. So the link is all over our website and all over our Facebook page, but we will add it to the description in this video after the live as well, if anyone's having trouble finding it. So now we're gonna look at ways in which we help to support our learners and learner parents as well. So we have a number of different streams of support available. Uh, as Pip said, your learner will have an assigned assessor who remains with them throughout their course. So they get to build that connection together. There is no AI bots responding to anyone. It's a real live creative person who views that learner's work. And this, we think, is really um, a great way of being able to build that rapport and tailor our approaches with that individual as well. One of the great things about home education in general is that you can follow um, the individualised needs of a learner and we want to support that as well in everything that we do. So we have our YouTube channel. All of those pre-filmed tutorials are all available on our YouTube channel freely. So you can log on and have a look through any of the tutorials that we have got made. You can have a look through various other courses as well. You don't necessarily only have to go on there for cake decorating. But you can have a look through everything that there is. And that can really help guide your learner as to whether or not this is the type of course that they want to um, investigate. So as I say, you have your own assigned assessor as well as access to a qualified teacher, which for cake decorating is going to be PIP. And alongside that, you have social media support. So if you ever reach out on any of our social media channels, which could be Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and you need any support, comments or DMs or anything like that, it is going to be likely me <laughs> that answers them. So I am always more than happy to help any question. There is no such thing as a silly question. Don't believe in that at all. So any questions at all, please do reach out. And as we spoke about a little bit earlier, we also have closed community groups for every level for every course, aside from cake decorating, which is one group that includes both our level one and level two learners as well. And within those community groups, you have access to specific feedback from others who are also on the course. You can share your creations. You can share things that aren't even what you've completed for the workbooks, just anything you've had a go at and just share that creativity with others who are equally interested in it. We have additional files within those groups as well, which include sample sessions, uh, that equipment list that I spoke about as well. That's all in there too. And um, those are really, those community groups are really great sources of inspiration and connection with others as well. And you can join those whether or not you're an enrolled learner, whether you're considering or whether you're just really into cake decorating and maybe your learner isn't ready for one of the courses yet, but you can join any of those groups and engage with other learners. Cool. So if you want more info, as Joe just mentioned, definitely join our community groups for that uh, for this course so look for the cake technology triumphs cake decorating course if you can't find the link do dm us and we'll give it to you another good point to start is our website if you haven't looked at our website already um beyond the information the much more detailed information on the cake decorating course where you can um see the information pack you can see our general prospectus so all of our other courses and overviews we've also got loads of free content on there as well so we know that obviously paid for courses aren't for everyone it might be that your budget doesn't allow for it or your learner's not ready or doesn't want to engage in that kind of formal learning 
we do have a look on our other current courses at the bottom underneath all, all our paid for courses are a load of free provisions that we are continually adding to through the year so and they are not just craft based we have got creativity for mental well-being we've got maths provision on there we're going to have literacy provisions on there we've got an art draw along that's free every monday um, and then we upload all of these videos onto YouTube. So even if people aren't on Facebook, we do make these uh, provisions accessible to all. Um, we've even got Careers Week on there. So people that are interested about other careers or learning about teaching CV writing and interview fit skills for perhaps older children, it's all on there with more coming. So um, it's a good point. Uh, just to check us out to understand what we're about a bit more and to be able to access those free provisions and just to reiterate you don't have to be an enrolled learner with us to be able to access those provisions they really are for everyone there are no strings attached you don't sign up for anything you don't have to give us your emails you literally click and you've got access to them so yeah that's pretty much all we came online to say um so it was just to introduce the cake decorating if anyone watching has got any questions, we'll leave it another couple of minutes. Um, if, like us, you, it's one of those scenarios where you put the phone down and go, oh, that's what I meant to ask, then you can pop a message onto uh, or comment onto here. Even after we've gone offline, we will be monitoring messages that come in. If you didn't want to put it publicly, do DM it. Like I say, it'll be Joe that picks that up. If you want to message perhaps in more detail about something or get some um some information packs sent to you direct via email. You can email me direct at technologytriumphs at outlook.com. If you've watched all this and you think, yes, cake decorating is for my learner, or not cake decorating, but one of your other courses, you can book directly through our Class for Kids page. You might be already familiar with these. These are a third party booking system that are used nationally by lots of clubs and children's activities. Um, it's a GDPR compliant um, website. You can find us on there again through our booking link. All our courses with available spaces are on there. And like I say, booking on there does not obligate you to any payments. So if you change your mind between now and the 1st of August, even if you can't figure out how to cancel it on the booking system, just email me and I will cancel that off for you. No questions asked and no problem at all. And then to say as well, if you are on social media, do give our main Technology Triumphs page a follow because that is where we often release details of new free provisions, new courses um, and competitions we run for the home ed community as well. We recently collaborated with Twinkle and we give out quite a lot of prizes. It's something we like doing, we like giving. So um, I think we've given out this year at least three whole courses funded for learners just as pri first prize winners for these competitions. So we're continually, continually thinking of new new things we can offer and new ways that we can help out our community. So yeah, that was all we came out to say. I can't see any questions come in, which I'm hoping means we've just covered everything really, really well. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> we'll we'll see. This will also be available to watch retrospectively, which is what Natalie asked earlier. So you'll be able to, you can rewind it in real time, but it can lag a little bit, but you can come back to our main page and watch this anytime. If you click on the events tab, it appears under past events, and this will also be uploaded to our YouTube channel as well. So if you want to rewatch it, you can rewatch it again as well. But yeah, any questions at all, please do reach out and let us know. And we are more than happy to help. Thank you.